Welcome, welcome everybody. My name is Brenda Miller and I'm a bag and quilt pattern designer. And today I have a very rare day off and I thought I'd like to do a little sewing, something simple to use up scraps. And I thought I'd share that little adventure with you. So what we're gonna be making today is a really cute, fast and fun to make table runner uh, that uses the quilt as you go technique. And then we're going to bind it and I'll give you detailed instructions on how to do binding so that if you've never done binding before, you can use the same technique to bind your quilts as well. So let's get started. I'm going to be using a selection of uh, prints here in blues and reds, and they kind of have a 1930s feel about them. They have little tiny prints. Um, if you're of my age, you might think of the Laura Ashley prints. Our Liberty prints look a little bit like this. So these are very old fashioned, but they should make a really sweet table runner. And I'm just envisioning it with some of the daffodils that are outside of the house today in a vase on top, just looking really cheery, springy and fun. So to make this project, you're going to need to uh, dig into your stash and find some prints that work together well. Uh, just a nice selection. I think I have about 10 here, but you could certainly do it with with less than that. In fact, you can even do it with two prints if you have two that you really like. You're also going to need some backing fabric and some fusible batting. So it's fusible on one side, the bumpy side, and in the description I'll give you links to exactly what these products are and how much backing and so on that you need. The fusible batting that I have here is a Pellon product and I just have a scrap that I'm working with. So this is a project made entirely of scraps. And what I want is to cut it down to the width of my table runner. And I'm thinking it would be nice if it were about 12 inches wide. That's a nice width for a table runner. And this product just happens to be about uh, 46 inches long. So I'm going to just put it on my cutting board. It has one straight edge and I'm going to align it and then cut it so that it is a perfect 12 inches wide. So here is my fusible fleece scrap that I have and it's it's quite long so I'm going to fold it in half in order to trim it and I do have one straight edge if you don't have a straight edge you're going to have to cut one first and so we've got a fold here and I'm using my rotary ruler and my rotary mat to give me a 12 inch measurement and then I'm simply going to trim this little piece off that I don't need there we go, throw that in the garbage, and now we have a 12 inch piece. Uh, this isn't too bad on the side and can be trimmed later, it's got a bit of a wow in it, but um, that will happen later on. So now uh, Fusible Fleece has a side that has a little bit of a nubbiness to it, a bumpiness, and then the smoother fleecy side. The side with the bumpiness is actually um, the, the, the glue that's on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a piece of backing and we're going to adhere, here's my right side, we're going to adhere the fleece to the fabric. And the fabric is about the same width, about 44 inches. So I'm just going to place it on top and flip it and then I'm going to iron it from the fabric side using my highest heat setting and lots of steam because we want to actually get that uh, glue melted onto the fabric. So that's what I'm going to do next. So here I have my bumpy side up. I have a little bit extra on either side of my um, uh, batting. So I've got you know an extra inch and a half on each side. So if this is 12, that would be 15 inches wide. And you notice I'm not, I'm not going back and forth with the iron. I'm just letting it sit and do its job. All right, now I found that my fabric wasn't quite as wide as my piece of batting. So when I came to the opposite end, I just uh, trimmed it off. Um, and that's just fine. It doesn't really matter how long this table runner is. It's going to look terrific. So now that this is all adhered, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim evenly uh, along the edge of the batting uh, so that everything is the same width. 
So I've gone all around the whole piece, and this is another opportunity just to check that um, nothing has gone out of square or gone wicky-wacky, as my grandkiddos would say, um, to make sure that everything looks pretty even. We're a tiny bit out here and here, but I'm not going to concern myself with, you know, an eighth of an inch. That's okay. So this portion of your runner is ready to go. And next what we have to do is um, cut some strips for it. For this project, I think I'll use one and a half inch strips and two inch strips. Because I want to show off a lot of different colors of fabric. So the first thing I want to do is I have some fat quarters and odds and ends here. I want to cut off the salvage edge of this fabric. So I am going to just square it up and take a little bit off. So after I get my salvage cut, I want to just take off a couple of strips. So maybe two two inch strips and two one and a half inch strips. And we'll go through all the fabrics and take off that amount of strips. Now, as you can see, there's gonna be some left over. So if I really like this look, I can go ahead and make another runner, a bigger runner, or some place mats to go with it. Now, if you're cutting from uh, the full width of fabric, like the 42 to 44 inches of fabric, you only need one strip of one and a half and one strip of the two inch fabric. All right then, so I have a whole bunch of little one and a half inch strips and a variety of a two inch strips as well. I'll just set those aside for a moment and get my ironing board out. And what I'm going to do now is take my backing and fleece. I'm gonna fold it in half just to find the center. And I'm gonna press a really strong crease here because I want to know um, where the center is, and I want to apply my strips so that they are going straight up and down and not sort of tilting off center. All right, so you open it up, and you want the fleece side up. I'm just gonna grab one of my strips and Place it right on that line. So, okay, I'm gonna put a couple of pins in it as well. Just to keep it nice and straight. And it is on my fold line. Okay, then I'm gonna grab another strip and it should be one that is um, the skinnier one, the one and a half inch. Here. And I'm going to place it right sides together to our first strip. So, and give it some pins. And then I'm going to stitch a quarter inch seam along this side. Now, just to tidy things up, I'm going to nip off my accessory ends. Okay, so here we are and we've got our strip that we wish, wish to stitch down. And I have my machine set up for a quarter inch seam. Now you might have a quarter inch foot that you'll be using on your machine. And I will use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And here we go. So I do like to back stitch at the beginning and end because we are gonna trim that and um, it just gives it a little more stability. And if this needs to be pulled forward a little bit, that's okay. If you have a walking foot, you could use your walking foot as well, but it's, it's not really necessary. The important thing is that you keep everything nice and straight so that your, oops, I forgot to do my back stitching, so that your strips don't start to like tip over as we go along. There we go. Now the pressing of each strip is very uh, important as well. What you want to do is press very accurately into that seam. 
And I'll tell you why. Because what I've um, seen often happen is somebody will just slap dash press and I mean there's still an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of seam allowance um, or, or fabric that, that has been tucked under. Okay, so you want to make sure that this is open, open, open. Um, otherwise, nothing is going to be square. So I kind of give it a little tug as I press, because I mean, I have been guilty of this myself when I've been in a hurry. So there we go. There's our first strip. Now I'm just gonna move my ironing board. And we have that little tail end poking out on each end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line that tail end to a grid and then I am going to take a two inch strip and I will put it right there. So now I know that that's pretty square and this is square. So everything's looking pretty good at this stage of the game, which is how we wanna keep it. So we're gonna to continue to add, I'm just trim this off here. I'm going to continue to add these strips along this side and then we're gonna start, flip it over and do the other side. So, okay, I want to pin everything together. To keep it even. Now, if you want to be really the Speedy Gonzales of sewists, you can do both sides at the same time. So what I would do here next is stitch my quarter inch seam, but I can also now turn it over, line up my edges here on a grid line of my cutting board. So a little off there. Okay, and now I need a one and a half inch strip for opposite side. So I can actually do two at once when I go to the sewing machine. So if your sewing machine is a distance from your cutting board or you just don't like to pop up and down like a gopher out of this hole, do two at once and you'll get done that much faster. Okay, so I'm off to the ironing board again and I can stitch this side, I can stitch this side, and again they're right sides together against your uh, previous pieces and then we will press both sides open Now don't let this go this way or that way or you're gonna be off again and Things will start to tip over So there's one side Okay, so that's going to open up like that, and we can do the other side at the same time by just flipping it around. So if you were doing a couple of these runners or placemats, you could just do, you know, one after the other, and, and that would speed things up too. Okay, so one thing I failed to mention is when you press, press it uh, flat first. That sets the seam and hides the stitches. They kind of sink into the fabric and then open it up and press into your seam to open it up. Um, so the nice thing about this technique too, if you've never done it before, is that you have your quilting done at the same time as your piecing. And that looks really kind of nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim some of these excess ends off. Then I'm going to do my lining up again. So I line up this edge and I line up the edge of my last strip. Okay, and if that all lines up, you should be in good shape. All right, so that's a uh, one and a half inch strip. So now I'm going to apply a two inch strip. If you want to alternate, you're putting the right sides together. Okay, now I'm going to just flip it to do the other side because I work better that way. Okay, so I line up the top edge. I line up my strip. So do you see here? Something strange is happening. 
what is it have I t oh okay it's just because I didn't have this properly lined up here on my edge it was a little bit down like that and that that kind of affected it okay so be careful about that that looks pretty good that's a two inch strip so we need a one and a half I have kind of a vast collection of scrap which I <laughs> would so much like to reduce so this is a nice way to use it I do have some actual um, 1930s prints that were given to me by one of the ladies I met at um, a church quilting group. And they're just tiny little bits though from dressmaking. So, but something like that, it would really be nice to, to use in a project like this. Even pieces of, you know, clothing that you, or whatever, that has some memory for you. This would be a nice way to just incorporate that into something that you could see every day or once in a while and just remember uh, what that um, piece of memorabilia was all about. So that's kind of sweet. Anyway, this is uh, this is how it's done. I'm just gonna carry on, I'll sew this one on, I'll sew this one on, I'll press flat, press open, um, then I'll line up on my grid and just work my way down both sides of this project and um, pretty soon we'll have that all done. So I'm just gonna do that and then get back to you. Okay, I'm coming to um, the end of my runner, and I just wanted to show you something. Um, so <clears throat> you can see I have this edge all lined up here. I actually had to go and take a ruler, because it does distort a little as you go. I took a big square ruler and just squared up this edge one more time, just so I know it's, it's, it's square. And uh, I'm just gonna lay a strip out here, and, and when I did, I noticed that I have about mm, two, it's like almost a quarter of an inch um, that's a little bit off square. So what you can do when you have a strip like that is you just lay it on square, okay? And then you're gonna use the edge of the top piece uh, for your quarter inch. And this will sort you out if you have anything going a little bit uh, off wiki wacky whatever you want to call it okay so there we are I've got the whole length of it done and what's gonna happen next is I'm gonna flip it over and trim off all these raw edges that are sticking out hey that looks lovely and now we just have to deal with those ends so it's a little bit of batting showing there. I don't think that's an issue because um, what's going to happen next is going to cover that little slip of batting. So let's look at the other side. And here we're going to have to trim off a little bit. So I'm going to take my ruler and there, done. So next, we're going to work on our binding. I only had one strip of this nice deep blue color, and I'm going to see, like what I want to do is pull this all together, and that's the only color that doesn't reappear. So I'm going to have a look at my stash and see if I have anything in that colorway to bind with, because I think that will tie it together nicely. I don't really want to use a pattern around this whole thing because um, it's just too busy. So. Uh, way back when in art class, and they always told us have some place where the eye can rest. And I think in this case, that will be a plain colored binding if I can find the right color. So leave that to me and I will see what I can find. Now we're going to talk about binding and I want to um, let you know that this binding technique will work on really anything from a placemat, a runner, to a quilt. And there are a couple of different ways to uh, tackle binding, um, the width of the binding in particular. So with this project, I have all edges even, the back, the batting, and the top are all evenly cut. All the way around and because of that I will use a two inch wide binding strip 
However, if I am making a quilt, what I pretty much always do is, I mean, the quilt top is finished. You place the layers together, the backing, the batting, and the top fabric, and you have it quilted. And then what I do is I do not trim even edges, but I trim a quarter of an inch away from the edges. And um, when I sew binding on that way, I still use this edge to stitch from, so I'll stitch my binding on a quarter of an inch away from this. But that little bit of extra um, batting and backing that's um, beyond the top uh, becomes a filler for the binding, which makes it feel uh, stuffed, just like your quilt is. Um, with, uh, and I cut it two and a quarter inches wide because of that, because there's that little bit of extra to get around when you do the binding. So with that said, we're going to be using a two inch wide binding strip for this quilt. And um, we should be able to get away with uh, three strips cut for this, two inches wide. So I have my blue fabric here. And I'm just going to fold it in half so you can see me cut it, otherwise it's not on screen. So I need to use my rotary cutter, line it up at the top just to cut an even edge. There we go. Then I'm going to flip it. And I will cut three two inch wide strips for this project. One of the problems. So now, as I was saying, we want to join all these strips together. And if you're uh, doing any sewing, you would think, okay, let's just put them together and sew across and then they're all attached. But that's not how we uh, do binding. What we do is we take our strips and we place them at right angles. So you'll notice again, I'm using a grid line here to line up this strip. And then I line up another strip uh, this is right sides together. Um, in this fabric, it doesn't matter because one side is the same as the other, but if you have a pattern fabric, it's right sides together. And then I'm going to draw a line along here. I've got a little bit extending each way so I can kind of see where the corners are, these insy corners. So I will draw a line from this top uh, left corner to the bottom right corner. Oops, my marker's a little bit dried out, but I think you'll see that. Okay, now we're going to pin these together because we're going to sew along that line. We don't want it to shift. So I've gone from corner to corner. Okay, I know this is the right side. I know this is the right side. So I want the right side up again. And I want to put right sides together. So I'm just using my grid lines again to make sure that everything is square. All right, and I'll draw another line from the top left to the bottom right. Okay. All right, pin. Now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew along that line. And again, you want to get from the corner to the corner. That way, when you open this up, everything will line up. Okay, so I have my uh, two strips of binding here and I will just stitch along the line. I've changed my thread to a matching color. There is no need to back stitch. And again, I'm just sewing into those little dog -eared corners. I can feed one piece in after the other without breaking my thread. And then I will cut them apart when I'm done. Yeah, so that's joined the two pieces together. And I'll just snip between the two pieces. And then you can use a ruler or you can just cut a quarter of an inch away from your seam line. And you will be pressing that seam open. I'll show you how to do that. There's gonna be a thread feeding back there. Yeah. Okay, back to the iron. Here's our 
uh, trimmed binding and again I will press it flat first then I'll open it up and I will just slip that seam to open the actual seam itself and press that. The reason we press it open is so that when we uh, fold it together and sew around we don't get too many layers. Here's another one. Press flat. And open the seam. Okay. Now we're going to take our binding and we're going to fold it wrong sides together. Just better make sure I'm on the wrong side here. Yep. It's hard to tell on a solid fabric. And with great accuracy, because <laughs> there's no point in doing this if you don't get the edges even. Fold it in half and press it. What you do next is you fold under the width of the binding at this stage. So it's an inch wide, so I want to fold back one inch. Now if I were cutting two and a quarter inch binding, I would, uh, or two and a half inch binding, I would fold over an inch and a quarter because two and a half divided by two is an inch and a quarter. Okay, so there we go. Put my ironing board away. Okay. Now, here's our runner. And if this were a quilt, we'd use the same procedure or a placemat. So I want to find halfway of the length. I'll put a pin there. And halfway of the width as well. So first we'll do the length. We just fold the article in half, and if, if this were a quilt, I'd fold it in half, or I'd measure it and find the halfway point. It doesn't really matter how you come to that measurement. And now I'm going to fold to find half of the width, and I'll place the pin there. And we also have to find the center of the middle, okay? So we fold our lengthwise pins in half, and I know that this is 12 inches, right? So I'm not going to fold it to find that. I'm just going to measure it on my grid. So here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So is it still 12? Yeah, a little less. So I'm just going to center it to 12 inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's center. And right in the fold, I'm going to put a little pin prick, okay? So there it is, marking that right there as the center, okay? Alrighty. Imagine this is a very weird shaped quilt. So what we want to do is we want to start our binding at the long center edge, okay? So what you would normally do is place your binding on raw edges all lined up. So the raw edge of the binding is here, the raw edge of the piece is here, and you would sew it around this unit. But we, uh, to keep an article square, it's not as important on a table runner because we know this thing's square, we just measured it. But if you've got a big quilt, it can get out of square with quilting. So what this does is it fixes any of that waviness that might happen on the edge of your quilt if you didn't square it up. So here's how you do it. So we know that our center is here of the, the entire piece. I'm going to call it a quilt at this point. We know the center is here. We know the outer edge is over here. And we know to keep it square, the measurement between here and there should be the same measurement that we have for the binding from here and there. So because we're going to be sewing the binding on in this direction, we want to get an accurate feel for this distance. And to do that, I just lay my binding here at this center point of my pin and to the edge where the pin sits over here. And I'm going to stick a pin through these raw edge edges of the binding. Okay, and now I know that when I place this here, that has got to fit. Now I might have to stretch it to make it fit 
because it looks like what's happening to this is it's a little bit longer this way than it is that way. Just want to check my measurement, make sure I got that right. And a little bit off, so I'm going to just tuck it in a little bit more. There. So that would fit there. And that's pretty much right, so it isn't, it isn't off. Okay. Now, if I were sewing this down, I would next take my binding to here, right? So from here to here is what we need a measurement of. And to get that, again, we don't want to just take this measurement. We want to know how uh, wide it is from the center, because we want the center width to be the same as the outer width. So I go to my last pin I placed, and I lay it along the center, and right on the edge is where the pin goes, and then I just hold my binding and find where the other edge is here at the side. So now I'm going to put a pin in here. Okay. So this piece is going to fit from here to here. So if we were sewing our binding on next, we're going to go down the whole length. Okay. So I take my last pin, I place it on the center because to find this um, length of binding we have to measure through the center. I place it here and I feed it across. There's my center pin. Now I'm going to have to pull everything over because my field of view here isn't that big. Can you see that? Yep, yeah, good. And I'm going to bring it over here to the edge of the piece. And I'm going to put a pin in there. So now this piece will fit on the outer long edge. Okay. So we started and we've come around and now we have to get this uh, measurement for our binding. And again, we go back to center. Here's center. We lay our pin at the edge and we put a pin right where the quilt ends. There, okay. So now We've come around the whole thing and now we're over on this edge. And we're coming back to our starting point. We started in the middle, if you'll recall. Alrighty, so that's our last pin there. So what we need to measure here, it's kind of the opposite of how we started. So we need to measure from here to here in the center to know what this measurement should be. So we lay it out again. We take it to center mark and we pin it. All right, so we started off with a folded under edge of the width of the binding, one inch in this case, and now we want to pin for a folded under edge at the end of the quilt, which is right there. Okay, these two edges, like this, consider this a folded under edge here, but we still have this tail end. These two edges are going to fit together like we did when we added our binding pieces together. You'll see that in a minute. Okay. Now we start with our beginning edge, our folded under edge, and we pin it to the center of the long edge where we started. We put a pin in this binding so we know where to place it at the corner. That is where it needs to go, right there, so that the pin is in the corner. We pin that in the corner. Looks a little floppy, right? Don't worry about it. Just give it a little tug, walk it in, and pin. And we are putting it, of course, on the top of the, of the piece of the quilt in this case. So now we pin in to fit. Because we pin in to fit, our piece will remain square. It's not going to be wavy. It's not going to sit on the table weirdly. If it's a quilt, it's not going to be all kind of fluttery on the edges. Okay, so we've come to our first corner. Now how do we get around the corner? Here's how you do it. Okay, we can take this pin at the corner out. It's out. Now, watch carefully. We fold this piece in that direction so it lines up here. 
See how I've got that 45 degree angle? If I use my grid line, that might help you figure this out too. We've got our 45 degree angle, and this piece runs parallel to that. It's on the grid line. Okay, now where this touches the first piece of binding that we laid out, we fold it back on itself. Okay, and then we're going to pin. So I'll just go through that one more time. We take our pin out, we fold it back at a 45 degree angle, right into the corner of the little quilt top we have here. Okay, it's nice and straight with this edge. We make a fold right here, going down the new edge. All right, and we have to put a pin there. There we go. Okay. Now, I'll show you how to sew that down when we get to that part, so don't worry about that just yet. Okay, here's our next pin, and that tells us where this binding has to end into this corner. So with all those raw edges even, we pin it there. We can take this pin out now just to pin this binding to this short side. There. All right, that wasn't too bad. Okay, now I'm going to flip it around again because we're going to start up the other edge, the other long edge. And I'll line it up on a grid line for you so it's easier to see. Okay, we take that pin out again. Now we want to do that 45 degree angle into the corner. There, that's pretty good. Okay. Now we want to fold it going that way so that this edge is even with the previous binding line. See how that line's right up there? Okay, back goes that pin to hold all those layers together. Okay, now I've got kind of a long length that you're not going to see on the camera again. But what I'm going to do, speed it along here so you can see my next pin. This pin has to go in this next corner. We treat it exactly the same as before, where I fit it into place. All right, I've got to turn it here because I don't have enough table length that way, so I give it a little tug because it's a little bit bigger than the middle. Love it. Stick my pin in there again. That's the center pin. And I'm just going to make it all fit. Give it a little tug to find the center of this area. I always pin center, so this is one half of that side. I pinned in the center. Now I pin in the center of that section, and I pin in the center of this section. And if I need more pins, I'll put more pins in. Don't be afraid of pins. Just don't sew over them or you'll break your machine. Okay, so here's our other section that's still loose. And it looks, this looks a little tighter than that, but that's okay. We're not woodworkers here. Everything has a little give. Okay, so I'm pinning in the middle. Pinning in the middle. Pinning in the middle. Okay, that's good. So we're going to that corner of the width again. I'm gonna put one pin here because there is a bit of fullness there and I don't want it to feed back. Okay, so I'll take this corner pin out. I'm on a grid line here so you can see it easier. And I do my 45 degree angle. There, nice. And then I'm going to fold it back so it's even here. There. That's important, by the way, to get that even. Of course, it's all important, but you want to do that right. Okay. Now we've got our next pin, and that's going to go in this corner. There we go. Again, I have to give it a little stretch. And 
and attach it. All right, now we're on to our last section. All right. So again, I'm gonna remove a pin. Line it up on a line for you there. 45 degree angle. Remember how I said we had that little bit extra of batting sticking out? Well, we're gonna hide it now with our seam. So we actually want our 45 degree angle to go right into the corner. We fold that over nice and even. Here we go, and pin. All right, now our next pin is the center. So that's where center belongs. I am going to take a pin. See, there's my, my center right there. I'm going to take a pin and pin this so that it, it's lined up there and doesn't pull back. Okay, now we need to fit this in, so I have to give it a little tug. Find the center. and get everything pinned. All right, now. Okay, so I see I have done everything correctly. Um, it's good to always just check. I have that extra inch here that I'm gonna need to join these pieces together, which will happen momentarily. So what I'm going to do is cut across where that last pin was. That's that extra one inch pin. Okay, now we have to put these together the same as what we did with uh, when we joined the binding strips. So we have to remove some of these pins in order to do that because we can't um, manipulate it with it's all stuck together. Okay, so here's the way I approach this. I always, um, in this case, pretend <laughs> that I am sitting on the quilt. I am on the quilt and I am looking at it this way. If I do it this way, it always works. If I'm doing it from this direction, forget it. So pretend you're on the quilt, even if it's not a quilt. You open up the binding. This is the right side. You open up the binding on the other side. This is the right side. And you take it and you place those edges together. Okay, we don't have any overlap at this, this time. We've got them right on top of each other. Perfect. I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew across there and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to finish this off. So we've just sewn that together. And now before I uh, trim this extra bit off, I just wanna make extra sure that this looks like it's gonna work. It is gonna work. This is a good step to take because after you cut this off, you're in a bit of trouble if it's not right. So off goes that bit. And then I, I would normally iron this, but today I'm just going to finger press it open so I don't have to stop. I'm going to finger press. Okay, now we fold it back and we pin it in place. And that brings us all the way around our piece with a lovely and precise finished edge of your binding and finished ends. Okay, so back to the sewing machine to sew the binding on. Okay, so I'm gonna just start where I left off here on that joint. And I want my quarter inch, Oop, that's not it, there we go. And you wanna sew a quarter of an inch away from the edge again. Now. If you have a walking foot, this is a good place to use it. And the walking foot is used uh, when you have a lot of layers. So we've got two layers of binding because it's folded in half. And then we have, of course, our, our runner and it's made up of various layers. So the walking foot keeps, um, it's got a, like a feed dog system at the top. So it keeps everything moving evenly through your sewing machine so that you don't get any uh, little bunch ups. But uh, a lot of you don't have a walking foot, so <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how to do it without. And all it takes is a little bit of tugging. 
sometimes of your fabric just to eliminate that problem. So I'm just, I'm actually putting a little tension on the front and the back with my, with my hands. So I'm pulling a little at the back here and I'm pulling a little at the front. So now I'm coming close to a corner. is take this little piece that's folded and fold it back in the opposite direction. So it was over here, it's over here like this, and now I'm flipping it back. And I'm going to stitch just maybe a stitch away from this 45 degree angle. Okay, I'm gonna just back stitch one stitch. I'm gonna lift my foot with my needle and pull it out. Now I'm going to fold back the little flap to the way it was. And I'm gonna spin my, my piece around so that I am ready to start sewing straight across here, okay? And I'm off again. I do apologize for that horrible angle of my camera. So what I'm gonna do is I've got some paper here and I'm treating it as a quilt. And I think that will make it pretty clear as to how this gets sewn on. So let's just approach these corners and I think that's what you're not seeing. I'll try and keep my, my hands out of the way so you can see how the corners turned. Okay, so we, we approach our corner and we stop a little way away. Now I'm gonna remove this pin, and this is the corner flap that you push back, and I'm hoping you can see that. Let me get a pen. There is a 45 degree angle fold right here. Oops, right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna stitch just before it. I don't wanna stitch over it. If that happens, the corner won't turn properly. So I'm gonna stitch up to that, or just before that. Stitch your two away, and I'll just do a back stitch. Okay, now I lift my foot and my needle, and I pull it away, and this flap that we just folded over here, we now put back to where it started from. Exactly where it was, okay. And we start stitching like fairly close to that edge or off the edge and straight across to the next corner. So now I'm on the homeward stretch and I'm just coming up to where we started stitching. And all I wanna do is just stitch that point and over stitch it a little bit. I don't really have to back stitch. So there we go. All right, so this is the binding that is going to fold over to the back of the project. And next I will show you how to stitch it down by hand just to have a really professional finish. Alrighty, so now you want to get your self organized for a bit of hand stitching and for binding especially on large quilts I want to have a good needle that's not going to be too hard to tuck through the fabric I really like straw needles right today I've got some sharps uh, in sizes 5 to 10 and I picked out one here that has a bit of length to it and what we are going to do is put a knot on the end of our thread. You can just tie a knot if you like, but here's a little method to do it um, easily. So you take the end of your thread, hope you can see this, I'll just fold this back, maybe that'll help. Uh, take the end of your thread and place it, uh, the end of it towards the eye of the needle. Then you wrap around it two or three times. Then you kind of pinch that together 
excuse the state of my fingernails. And then you pull the needle through that wrapping and it will do a little knot for you then. See that? See that knot? Isn't that great? Okay, so now I've got a knot. And I'm gonna take my runner and I'm gonna fold, oh, let's move this around, fold the binding over to the back so that it covers the stitching line. See that? It's just gonna cover it so you're not gonna see it. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna start a distance away. Maybe not that far. <laughs> and come up right at that stitching line. The knot's gonna stop me right here at the fabric, but I'm gonna give it a little tug. It's gonna go pop. And now the knot is inside the fabric and that helps secure the, uh, the thread and the fabric and everything so it doesn't pull out. Now I'm going to go into my binding and just give it a few stationary stitches, tiny ones that are not going to show up too much, okay? All right, let me just get around my camera here so I can function. I'm hoping you can see this. Yes, you can, okay. All right, so you just pinch this binding down. You don't need to pin it or anything. The pins are just gonna get in the way of your thread. Okay, so you take your needle and you tuck it under that layer of um, backing fabric. See how I'm just kind of poking it through there? And then you come up right at that thread line, but you poke through a few threads uh, width of the binding. And now my thread is under the, the backing fabric and there it is. Now, I've come up in the binding and what I wanna do is I wanna take a stitch directly across from where it came up. I don't wanna go over here, I don't wanna go over there. I wanna go directly across and I wanna feed it underneath again and pop it up a few stitches in. See that? When I do that, I get these tiny, tiny little stitches forming. So I go directly across, I don't know, a good quarter inch if not more. And then I come up again through that binding. I go directly across. I bring my needle up, but I pop it into the binding, just a little bit in. And I call it a ladder stitch because it reminds me of the rungs of a ladder. I don't know what it's called. I guess it's a blind stitch of some nature. Okay. And then I'll just zip along over here to the corner and show you how to do a corner. This can be fairly fast. Um, well, not fast, but it's not that slow. Um, if you've got the right needle, if you've got the wrong needle, it's kind of miserable. Okay. And I'm just kind of popping that corner into the binding. If you're working with the, um, the method where you leave a little bit of extra batting, um, on your quilt to fill it. You will have to trim the corner batting piece out, but in this case, we're good. I don't have to trim anything. Okay, so I'm gonna approach my corner and I'm gonna stop my stitching right here where things intersect, okay? Oops, there goes my needle. Mm -hmm. thread there. Okay, here we go. And into that corner right there. And I'll just take a stationary stitch there just to keep it in place. Okay, I'm just going to take that, that bit of thread out of there so you're not muddled up with what in the world that all is. Okay. All right. Grab my needle. Okay. So we're just gonna turn it. <clears throat> okay, so there's that 45 degree angle that we're always looking for. We fold it up, see that? We just folded that up, that's all I did. And now I'm gonna take a couple of stationary stitches into the next side. There we go. And I could do a stitch or two along here if I wanted, but I'm just gonna pass on that today. And then I just keep going. Here we are. 
So I am going to take this outside because it's a beautiful day. And I am going to finish this off with a cup of tea and pick some daffodils and put them in a vase and bring them back and we'll pop our table runner on a table to show it off to you. See you soon. All right, I have my table runner. I have my, I have my vase and I have my flowers. So now I'm just gonna put them all together and we'll see you in a minute. And here we are, a completed runner. We've got some nice corners on the, the back as well as the front. Very sleek and that will cheer up my springtime table. So um, there's lots of variations you could do with this particular project. Instead of doing straight lines, you could just do wedges all the way across. You could do wider strips. You could take a strip and um, make little um, like two and a half inch blocks throughout it and then stitch that in. If you wanted a modern look, use um, solid colors, whatever you like. The sky's the limit. I hope this helped those of you who weren't familiar with binding techniques as well. And uh, enjoy your new table runner. Bye-bye.